Welcome to Facts and Two Cents. This is Petal. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are, whatever it is you're doing. Welcome to Facts and Two Cents. As you know, we are a channel that's supposed to be the Duchess of Sussex, Harry, Megan, Archie, Baby Lily, Mama Doria, Pula Guy, the Chickens, all of us here at Sussex Squad. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is an amazing day, February 1st. This is a late night recording, but it's a very exciting day. Black History Month starts today. And today, one of the wonderful things happened, uh, you know, Spoutable is up, Christopher Boozy site is up. We are now, you know, many of us are migrating from Twitter. I don't know if, um, you know, we will all be, people would all, you know, just stay there and just completely leave Twitter, but, Many of us are going to be over, unspotable, just a different experience, one where no trolls, no harassment, no hate, and it's beautiful for our mental health. So I'm excited about that, but we'll talk about that in a bit. But our faves are, well, they are under a tree somewhere, <laughs> which we love it. We love the fact that they are not here. They are under a tree somewhere in Montecito, and we hope they stay there for a while, just enjoy life, you know, protect their mental health and all of that wonderful stuff. So I'm happy about that. You know, of course, the press are going, you know, all their conspiracy theories as to why they're not visible, but, you know, I'm glad that they are not, you know, they've been, at least their names and their story has been public news forever the last especially the last couple of months so it's great that they are taking a break away from it relaxing doing their stuff and really you know a lot of it I think too focusing on their um on Archwell so and also their family so good for them I am happy that they are out of the spotlight and uh now people are begging for them so <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I absolutely love it. Our wonderful faves, you know, protect your mental health wherever you are. So, um, but they're doing great. But, you know, they are quiet, but they're the organizations that they work with, that they are in partnership with um, around the globe are not um, quiet. They are there and they are talking about, um, you know, the, what's going on in 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 the um, in their uh, charity, and one of those is SmartWorks. Uh, SmartWorks, as we learned from um, Harry and Meghan Archwell's uh, impact report, they mentioned about uh, the unemployment index that Smart uh, that SmartWorks has uh, produced, and through partnership with Archwell and they came up with this unemployment index and it's actually really fantastic. I'm not done reading it, it's very lengthy. Well, not very lengthy, it's just very, I mean, there's a lot of like stats and stuff like that to really be able to see where a person is um, when they are out looking for work. And so it's really impressive um, what, um, what they have done through, um, through SmartWorks and again Megan is um the patron of SmartWorks and so it's really fantastic that she has continued and again if you don't know SmartWorks is in the UK it's an um it's a charity that helps women um get back to um to you know working um, they provide from clothing you know their first I think their first week I guess outfits to go to work they also trained um train them with interviews and all of those things and really equip them so that uh, for their interviews and um, you know a lot of them book jobs and stuff like that and Megan has worked at SmartWorks um, in terms of going in and counseling women helping them pick out an outfit and all of those things and the outfits and all of that stuff is totally free from SmartWorks they get lots of donations from all, all over and we know recently Megan um, teamed up with a company in California that donated hundreds of bags, um, totes to SmartWorks to help women, you know, when they go into their interview to feel confident and, you know, capable and confident. And it's wonderful. So a little bit about the index. Um, 
It says, smart works. Read more about the experiences for women like Mayaro um, in the smart works female employment index and find out how the right support can make a difference. And um, at the bottom says, I'm sure by the time smart work call me in five years time, maybe I'll be CEO of a company. It is awesome. You know, she was one of the smart works clients going out for a work. And one of the things the index does is that it, uh, you know, it uh, just, you know, seeing uh, for unemployment, like, um, you know, how secure women feel when they go out for an, uh, for employment, whether they've, you know, got garnered skills on the job or outside of a job, or, you know, if they have more confidence, or, you know, knowing that they are women, or knowing that they're a mom and all of these things. So the, the, the study really goes in to all of these areas so that we kind of get a sense of um, where women are when they go out for these interviews um, to really get back into the workplace. And um, uh, SmartWorks um, CEO, um, d- uh, you know, wrote the forward for it and it's really great. And I want to read it or at least some of it. And again, I'm going to post the link to the um the uh, index so you guys can take a look at it and I'll post it here and also post it on our community page so that way you can see it however you want to see it. I'm also going to move um, our little scrolly bar on the bottom here and if you are new here and you have not subscribed to our channel please go ahead and do what the little scrolly bar says. Um, definitely go ahead and subscribe to our channel and um, you know please share this video. Share and like the video and also join our two cents crew if you're able that would be wonderful as well so I'm going to move all of this away all of this out of the way so I can read it and then I'll put them back later um so Kate Stevens um, from SmartWorks. She's the CEO of SmartWorks. And uh, so she wrote this forward. She says, anyone who has received a wage packet in their lifetime understands the power of, of employment, the freedoms it provided, the opportunities it opens, and above all, the person is enabled, um, the person it enables you to be. At SmartWorks, it is our privilege to see here and hear directly from thousands of women each year from across the UK, all different ages, abilities, and ethnic backgrounds, all united by the same ambition to get a job. This unique insight has long inspired one of our central beliefs, um, put central beliefs, put female workers Uh, Put simply, female workers are one of the greatest assets we have in our economy. But too often our clients come to us after months or years of trying and failing to secure employment, lacking confidence and frustrated by an increasingly challenging recruitment landscape. The the inspiration behind the first female and employment index is the desire to address the inconsistency. We want to ensure Sure that our clients' voices are heard and understood by those who have the power and means to create a better route to employment for women in the UK. As we face the most challenging economic circumstances in modern history, this work could not be more timely or important. Our service at SmartWorks is specifically designed to address the barriers women face when securing employment. We provide each client with interview training in high quality outfit delivered in a safe respect. Uh, in a safe, respectful, and welcoming environment. Together, this allows a woman to believe in her own potential. The service works because we have listened to our clients and built a program that addresses those issues on a practical and emotional level. In launching the Female Unemployment Index, we are applying the same approach to create an annual benchmark against which progress and impact and change can be tracked and measured. During our exploration of these experiences, there has been one reoccurring theme that despite the barriers faced, 
our clients remain determined to secure employment, they are committed and passionate and skilled, bringing diversity of thought and value to the workplace. We know that the process of securing a job is increasingly complex, but we believe by researching and publishing the issues facing unemployed women, we will pave the way for progress in female recruitment by giving a voice to our clients. We will help to unlock the female workplace. And it's great. And, and part of the, the areas um, that the index covers at, at the top in the yellow, it says for the for um, the first smart works female em- unemployment index is a robust study examining employment issues affecting women across the UK. It covers three areas, experiencing a, a unemployment, experiences of the interview process, and the meaning of having a job. And, um, you know, it's one of the things that's very surprising that people are like, you know, for the unemployed, you know, it's always, oh, it always has felt like the the, mo- the reason that people want to get a job is, is for the money. It's for the money, it's for the money. And so much of what this is, is that it's not the money, is that people could feel like they have a sense that they can do things for themselves, that it, it, you know, it brings a sense of self-worth and value to a person. And so it's really, the, the, um, the index is really, really, really interesting. So again, I'll put the link, please go ahead and read it. And the acknowledgement, it says, SmartWorks would like to thank all of the women who participated in this study particularly Melissa, Kelly, and Mario, uh, who kindly share their stories with us for the purpose of the index. We would like to thank the research agency Opinium for their advice and support throughout the data collection process and Archwell Foundation for the financial contribution that helped to produce the first SmartWorks female unemployment uh, index. So, um, you know, kudos to everyone. It's great to see, uh, you know, to see it by the numbers, what, uh, you know, where women are and the ways that they can be helped going forward as they look for, um, look for work. And so again, thank you, Archwell, for providing the funds to help them to be able to go ahead and do this. Again, tangible results, tangible things. And I love the impact impact again we got the the archwell impact uh, report from them now different organizations that they are connected with are, are putting out their impact report and you know at least with this they are research index so that you can see you know they're having an impact they're having uh you know you could tangible impact not just thought or giving people ideas it's things that you can see and so it is fantastic so kudos to everyone um and changing the subject over to spare <laughs> Spare, of course, remains at number one at the top 10 audiobooks and uh, on Audible, which, of course, I'm constantly playing mine. So I'm part of that, keeping it at number one. <laughs> but Spare by Prince Harry is number one audiobook and also the bestseller. It says, in a third straight week at the top of the UK official top 50 chart for Prince Harry's Spare. And that's from Trans World Books. And so, yeah, it just, it's a, it's a wonderful amazing and I'm glad to see people in the UK are reading spare you know I saw a post today where this girl was like you know her mom she said her mom has not read in like 20 years and you know that's she's like that's the whole Prince Harry has on people he has my mom reading (laughs) hey whatever it takes you know whatever it takes I'm glad Prince Harry's book is getting people back to reading so hey it's all good and talk about more wonderful stuff from the uh, Archwell and from the Sussexes. Uh, Nelson Mandela Foundation, um, they posted their highlights of the year. And of course, uh, part of their highlights is Left to Lead, which is um, left, th- uh, middle, middle, um, just the middle uh, photo on the left. Um, 
Lift to Lead is one of their 2022 highlights, and it should be. It's an amazing, amazing series. Again, if you haven't seen it, please do. And um, talk about um, just, again, impact. Again, the impact on Nelson Mandela's foundation and also the impact from um, the Archwell uh, Impact Report uh, yesterday. I'm sorry, two days ago, which I spoke about yesterday. And um, this is one of the organizations, Moms First. And they tweeted about it and uh, retweeted the uh, impact report. It says, proud to have our partnership highlighted in the Archwell Foundation 2020, 2020 to 2022 impact report. We are grateful for all that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex do to advocate for moms. And um, at the bottom, um, Moms First um, CEO Rasma Shajani says, Archwell Foundation has been one of the earliest and most impactful supporters of Moms First and the grassroots movement to get mom the support they need and deserve. From uh, paid leave to affordable childcare, Archwell has not only directed, directly invested in our national business coalition for childcare, dedicated to expanding childcare and benefits for American workers, but they have helped to ignite a national conversation about the urgency of supporting moms um, for our economy, our families, and our communities. Archwell's backing and the Duchess's generosity is using in using her platform to speak out as a mom and on behalf of mothers have advanced our efforts to transform policy while making while helping millions of moms feel recognized valued and empowered and again yes our archwell they are doing fantastic and just, you know, just, you know, the bottom where she talks about, you know, helping millions of moms to feel recognized, value and empowered. I mean, how powerful is that? How powerful is the platform that Harry and Meghan has? And I'm so glad to see how they are using it. And um, talk about using your platform. Well, child, also post put out an impact report today and it's just it's wonderful again all the organizations that harry and megan are working with they are making you know a tangible impact in people's life obviously well child with taking care of um sick uh terminally sick kids um well child award says um, the Well Child Information Hub provides helpful advice about looking after a child with complex needs, with diagnoses, to transitioning to adult services, and everything in between to read more about our impact. And they put a link. So I, again, I'm going to put a link to this in the show notes, but it's all great to see, um, you know, and they talk about 10,500 visitors um, to our family information hub. So I'm so happy that they have this, that families who in need can and um, get the help they need. And as of course, this is Prince Harry down there with uh, two well child recipients. And so Harry also wrote a letter um, in for the uh, impact report. And this was from the letter he wrote. He says, I want to start by acknowledging and uh, the continued determination and resilience of the well child community over the past six years. As a royal patron, I know there has been a moment, um, there hasn't been a moment to take a breath because of long because as long as a child and her family are in need well child has been there to step up and do what they do best provide care and comfort and support and um it is just you know the letter is there i'm just you know you guys um again i'm going to put the link there so you can go ahead and definitely read the letter a little another little part of the letter says as as families up and down the country continue to face difficult times well child remains a lifeline to many and as fundraising gets tougher and resources are harder to find it becomes even more important to support the essential work this charity does to help children and young people with complex needs and one of their um one of their uh ceo um left and so a new one coming colin dyer stepped out and um uh, and uh, the new CEO, Matt James, has come in. So, um, you know, 
they are doing great work. And the great thing about this is not just, you know, Harry isn't just writing a letter. Um, if we remember in Spare, um, the book Spare, Harry um, donated 300,000 um, of the, his profits from Spare to Wellchild. And then also, I think, 1.5. Five million, I think he donated to Sante Bali. So he is not just their patron, but he's really putting his money there, you know. And so it is great to see Spare helping to pay the, you know, for sick kids in the UK. So, and that's the thing about it, you know, though Harry and Meghan aren't there in the UK, they are continuing to actively support these organizations. So it is just really, really wonderful to see. And again, this letter is in the packet and I'll put the link in the show notes so you can click on it and read the entire thing. So it's awesome. And... Spoutable! Spoutable is here! As of noon today, Spoutable is up. This is the, um, you know, this is what Twitter should have been and Twitter isn't, but um, it is. it operates just like Twitter. It is wonderful. Christopher Boozy, um, you know, he created this, him and his team created this, and it is just a great alternative to Twitter, where Twitter has a lot of hate and trolling and just all of that. This will not have that. And there, you know, the hate accounts or single purpose hate accounts will not exist on Spoutable. So a lot of us squaddies have migrated or are migrating um, to Spoutable. And there's my first spout today. Um, hello, Spoutable. What a wonderful new world. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher Boozy. History made. Thank you. And uh, Christopher Boozy tweeted this morning, says, today is the start of Black History Month and it's a special day for all of us. Later today, I'll launch the first Black-owned Twitter alternative that focuses on protecting its users and provide a safe environment for marginalized communities. Let's make history together. And so that is up and running. It's so funny because I think 10,000 people came in today onto the site. So for a while it was running really slow and he was, Chris was like, oh my goodness, we need to get more servers. So now it's working fine. And so it is fantastic. Um, you know, squaddies are migrating and we're following each each other and all of this wonderful stuff so um i think after a week it's gonna open up to everyone so but if you've already pre-registered you could go on and you can create your account so on the on there i'm the same as twitter at facts and two cents so you can always find me unspoutable come on over say hi and i will follow you back so there <laughs> but kudos to christopher boozy man i'm telling you this man tried everything to get Twitter to clean up its act and Twitter refused to, you know, they would do a couple of them and then really go right back to their ways and they ignored a lot of stuff. I mean, single purpose, hate accounts just runs rampant on Twitter. It is just crazy. So it's so wonderful to see out of that, Christopher and his team created an alternative and now all these reporters and stuff are all going over to Spoutable. So, um, you know, whatever ends up happening to Twitter, at least we have um, uh, Christopher Boozy. And I think, um, I think it's just so amazing to see, you know, we got first connected with Christopher Boozy because of um, him doing that report on Megan and really calling out trolls. And now look at where he is. He has his own platform. So it is just absolutely wonderful. So kudos, Christopher Boozy, you know, and um, uh, yeah, again, if you if you are on social media and you haven't and you've already pre-registered, you can go ahead and sign up and follow us. So that way we can, you know, we can follow each other on Spoutable. So it's great. Um, but we're going to change, uh, we're going to change topics for a bit. And so I'm so like, you know, what? let's just play a little bit of a change music because we are just going to change. <laughs> So not, not, you know, not that I am even good at fading, but um, (laughs) 
and not that this is all that dramatic but it's very interesting i saw this um i saw this today and um camilla Coveney, and i think this happened yesterday but one of the things that's going on in england right now is a massive teacher strike and so as you can see in the picture from the left, they have taken to the streets. And so they are on the streets uh, protesting. Then you also got the railroad strike. I mean, so many people in the UK are protesting right now and striking right now. So as um, Nereo uh, posted, it says, the teacher strike rally making its way up Regent Street. So they are protesting. And one of the things that happen with the, you know people on strike is not many teachers. So this happened on this morning. Thousands of schools are to be affected by the teacher strike on Wednesday. Camilla Tomini reveals she will be going into a school to help this with staffing issues. That's right. Lying Camilla Tomini, Camilla Tomini is a liar, is going to be going to her son's school to teach. And I was like, oh my Lord. <laughs> That this lying woman is going among children to teach and you know so you can say well you know it's a son's school but this woman just lies and lies and lies and i could guarantee you some of what she'll be teaching are lies and so yes if things aren't bad enough just know it can <laughs> it's just gotten worse camilla tomney is going into school to teach children oi <laughs> oi 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 anyways more you know bad news for the uk you know that uh country that is like oh we're not racist at all well tell that to <laughs> tell that to the un you know the united nations human rights commission tell that to them because this is what they tweet. It says racism in the UK is structural, institutional, and systemic. People of African descent in the country continue to encounter racial discrimination and erosion of their fundamental rights, warned US, uh, UN group of experts on people of African descent. And um, a clip from the article, it's a little bit of a long article, but this is a clip from it. It says, we have serious concerns about impunity and the failure to address racial disparities in the criminal justice system, deaths in police custody, joint enterprises, conviction and dehumanization, uh, dehumanizing nature of the stop and search of the stop uh, strip and search. Um, the UN Working Group of Experts on People of African Descent said in a statement in the, at the end of their official visit to the UK, the expert documented the trauma felt by people of African descent who have suffered racial discrimination and injustice in the UK. A woman of African descent who we met during our visit lamented, will this ever end, they said. A decade of austerity measures in the UK has exacerbated um, racism, racial uh, racial discrimination, and other tolerance of people, other intolerance of people of African um, descent uh, encounter, which had an adverse impact on their fundamental rights. The experts observed. And so, yeah, this is for the we are not a racist uh, country. And, you know, there, these experts are there in the, well, at least they were in the UK, conduct, conducting this research. And this is the conclusion they came to. And the trauma that's felt and, and that by people at their, you know, the receiving end of racism. And it's so funny, their thing at the bottom says, no, say no to racism, you know? Um, I was going to move myself out of the way so you can see fully that it says, uh, say no to racism and this racism in the UK. And again, many people like to bury their heads in the sand, claiming that there's no racism in the UK, including some black prints, you know? And so um, it's good to see that the UN is like, no, 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 we're going to address this. And so will the UK take heed? Oh, no, I really don't know, but I hope they do. And I had to read, you know, think, do I want to talk about this? Do I want to, you know what I mean? It's just one of these things. But 
it's important um, in light of the fact that we're talking about the impact, impact of charity work, impact of work by the Sussexes and the great impact they are making. On the other end of the, the spectrum is this nonsense. And it's very funny to me to see um, reporters now, you know, trying to call out the royal family and call out Kate on the mess that is her early years, early childhood thing that she keeps launching every year, it seems. And it's the same thing she's saying all the time, it's not nothing different. But Sky News, uh, you know, if you don't know, Kate launched this new um, groundbreaking um, shaping us campaign or shaping us childhood campaign and it's like every year she launches another part of this and with no tangible results and so now the press who should have been calling this out like eight years ago or ten years ago when it started they should have been calling the, the fact that they've only now started calling out the nonsense that this is it speaks to the volume it speaks volume of the fact that she doesn't have anyone to hide behind anymore. She doesn't have anyone to throw under the bus anymore. When Megan was there, they would have formed some kind of narrative to make the all, you know, make people focus on Megan and be distracted by whatever they're saying about her and which would have given Kate a free ride. Now, she doesn't have anyone that they could throw under the bus anymore. So now they're looking at her and looking at the impact of her work. And um, Sky News says, the time has long passed for awareness, said the practitioner of the early year sector. The Prince of Wales has launched a Shaping Us um, Childhood campaign, but one of the group has said, long-term investment, funding, and action is needed instead. And um, the headline for the article says the princess of wales launches childhood campaign but faces calls for investment not awareness the princess of wales has launched her new early early childhood plan in leeds but a campaign group that has long invest uh, said long-term investment is required instead instead of raising awareness dr mine conk buyer a member of the practitioner of early year sector said, we are well accustomed to MPs and royalties visiting the early year setting, praising the invaluable work of practitioners from David Cameron to Gordon Brown and, and the Queen Consort. And she um, further it says, but nothing is done. The time has long passed for awareness. We are in need of action. We need action, long-term investment and funding in the early years. And another part of the statement says, Dr. Conky Bear says that no early years expert were on the team that wrote a key report for the princess, Royal Foundation, uh, for the princess's Royal Foundation Center of Early Childhood. And so I'm glad that she's speaking out. I'm just glad she's like, look, what's needed is, an, is, is money, is investment you know, investment from the government and others um, in early years, um, in early years. And there were other organizations that were doing it that the government cut funds for. And so the thing about with Kate, the problem with her is she has not shown any tangible results for anything that she has claimed is this major launch. It's gotten a lot of publicity in the UK. They, you know, her fashion has got a lot of publicity in the UK, but the meats and potatoes of her initiative is so light and is so not there. It's just, you know, this light thing that is apparently her life's work. And it's just like, girl, this makes no sense. You know, the things that you're not addressing is the fact that poverty, especially now with the cost of living crisis, that's the big hindrance, you know, and I'm glad people are calling on. It's very interesting. Um, the doctor said that no early years experts were on the team that wrote the key report for the princess. So she keep claiming experts and experts. Where were the experts who were when they were writing this initiative thing? You know, and so um, again, this is something that should have been called out in Kate years ago. And they have been coddling her mediocrity all this time. So they shouldn't be surprised that this is where they are. You know, Ovid Scobie also wrote an article about it. He says, I admire Kid Princess Kate's commitment to her early years work, but to have a real impact in this sector needs to need needs to be 
more than just awareness. And a couple of clips from his article, it says, um, you know, he was praising her effort. Well, not her effort, but her heart in wanting to do it. Like she seems really genuine and all of these things. But he goes on to say, but after 12 years of work, the goods being delivered right now feels light. Some within the earlier sectors have already voiced frustration. We know all to a, we are all we are well accustomed to MPs and royalties visiting early year setting, praising the invaluable work of practitioners, but nothing is done. A statement from the practitioners of early year sector group says the time has long passed for awareness. We need action, long-term investment and funding in the early years. And another part of the clip says, if anything, shaping up, which is the initiative, that's what it's called, shaping up exposes the ineffectiveness of the royal family's charity work, the the ineffectiveness that the royal family's charity work can have, because it's almost impossible to have an impact in this field or even usher in the smallest change without considering all of the social factors that have an impact on early development. That cannot be done without stepping into policy or politics. The one thing Kate can't do as a working member of the royal family. Again, these are conversations, these are what should have been written eight years ago. And especially the last few years when she did that five questions where she came, took 10 years to come up with five questions, you know, they should have been calling that stuff then too. You know, because again, none of this made sense. None of it was valuable in any way. And what people, what her thing is, is all about just bringing awareness. Well, as they said, awareness is not the people are aware of what, you know, it takes to raise their child and make, you know, in the most, the most healthy situation. But raising awareness is not going to solve the pro- the problem that a lot of these families can't eat they don't have money to eat the mom and especially have to work three and four jobs to put food on the table bringing awareness is doesn't you know it doesn't put it doesn't put food in the child's mouth the time for awareness is over it's time for some you know tangible things for example money fundraising for these people donating your money your time they just went to a food bank the other day and showed up empty-handed you know and it's ridiculous and again their lavish lifestyle is taking money out of the you know the mouth of babes you know and so and but one thing i have to disagree with omed is like you know he says um you know he talks about you know she she would have to get into politics or something to be able to lobby to get those changes that need to happen so that people you know are, are more open to you know um early years development like people are more open to uh, you know in her advocacy making sure people in government especially um you know fund the programs that needs to be funded and all of that stuff that needs to be and so scoby is saying you know that's the one thing she can't do because she's a royal therefore she cannot step into politics and stuff and my comment to that is that is a blatant lie that is a lie when the royal family wants something and wants a benefit for them they quickly step into policies they lobby for things all the time we know we know like the queen lobbied to get exemption from race laws we know that um the queen lobbied the um the parliament in scotland when she wanted to um you know she didn't want to follow uh scottish environmental laws she lobbied and got and she got her um you know she got a pass where she does not have to um follow those environmental laws that other people have to follow when they are when they want stuff they are able to lobby to get it you know when when they wanted to um you know hide their will and hide their fortune from the british people guess what they went and lobbied parliament to get it they can't lobby to get what they want you know and so the, the idea that she or they in the royal family can't lobby to get um laws passed to protect you know early years children or, or or to be able to release funding for programs that can um to help the early years that is absolutely possible but they don't want to 
the only again the only reason the only way and the only times that they ever do it is when it profits the monarchy but the idea that they can't get into politics to go lobby for that that's nonsense that is absolutely nonsense and again we have evidence that they've been doing it all along when they want something that benefits the monarchy they they probably go over the parliament and lobby for it again race laws environmental laws they wanted to be immune to that and they lobbied and got it you know so why can't they lobby and and for children's rights and and, and to protect you know zero to five year olds so again and again you know if this is supposed to be her life's work and you're in a monarchy that prohibits you from suppo- doing supposedly your life's work, then why are you in this monarchy? What's the point? What is the point of you being there? You know? And if she is as passionate as she is, one, she would go like, you know, let the chips fall where they may. Because if she is passionate about it, then she would find a way to go out there and in lobby to get what she wants passed you know, and fight for it. So will she do it? I think not. Because again, with her, this is just for shows about her clothes. It's again, you know, and they have a thing where they're like oh, lamenting the fact that all the press talk about is their clothes. Because I mean, the reason why they do is because what you're saying and, and, and whatever project you have is so lightweight, there's no point to talking about it. They can't really, when you're talking, when she's talking, people, they you know, the videos, usually the sound is off. Because it's just, it's cringeworthy, you know? So again, if she wants to, and if she cares about these, as she says, then there is absolutely no reason for her to not go and lobby. So yeah, this nonsense about, oh, royals can't get into politics. Absolutely nonsense. They do it all the time, just when it benefits them. Um, And <laughs> the UK is just... <laughs> <laughs> it's like y'all a mess. America is an absolute mess itself, but uh, you know, it's just very interesting reading this. Uh, the U.S. Uh, the U.S. general has criticized the state of British Army and defense sources have said the U.K. military is a service unable to protect the U.K. and its allies. And it's incredible because in the you know, times of Brexit, it's just like mm, you know. Um, it says the U.S. general warns British Army no longer amount. Um, the U.S. general warns British Army no longer among the world's top-level fighting forces. It says a U.S. general has supposed, has reportedly told Defense Secretary Brent Wallace that the the British Army is no longer considered to be among the world's top-tier fighting forces, according to a Sky News report. Defense sources reported that by Sky News has revealed that the unnamed general reportedly warned Mr. Wallace about the status of the army and sources also claim the UK armed forces were a service unable to protect the UK and its allies. One of the unnamed officers told um, Sky News, Rishi Sunak, risk failing in his role as a wartime prime minister unless he took urgent action given uh, given the security threat posed by Vladimir Putin's Russia. And another part of the clip, again, I'll post this in the show notes, says, as the U.S. general is said to have told Mr. Wallace that the U.K. military is not a tier one fighting force and it is barely even tier two. Tier two would describe a more middling power with less fighting capabilities such as Germany and Italy. So they are barely two, you know, they have a force right now that they cannot defend. And that's the assessment. They they just don't have the capability to defend the UK or its allies. And that should be very scary <laughs> to us. But, you know, it's one of those things when y'all are sitting there focused on Harry and spare, and yet your military can't defend you or their allies. This is serious. So I hope that they are rectifying this. But, you know, yes, this should be all over the press. This should be really concerning and be like, you know, but, you know, but Harry. Anyways, finally, ending on a positive note. Um, Invictus, there's a half marathon happening in London on October 6, 2023. So, um, you know, that's David in there. Um, 
So if you'd like to sign up for this half marathon, um, the, I'm going to put the link in the show notes so you can go ahead and do that. So Invictus, again, there's so many parts of Invictus that there's so many parts and so many things people can do to make sure that they are staying fit and mentally, physically, and spiritually fit with Archwell. And for no reason, I just love this picture with Harry and our little Invictus friend. And I was just like, oh, this is so adorable and so cute in the Invictus gear. And I'm sure this little man gets so much uh, inspiration from the veterans there who equally had one leg amputated. So kudos. I just love this picture. That's why it's there for no other reason. <laughs> So I just wanted to end on a positive note. But anyway, guys, that's it. That's all I got. Um, thank you so much to our moderators, Lydia Church, Nelly, Karen, Karen Emma, Cookies and Cream. None of who will be on this because this is a straight drop video. Um, and But I am grateful for all the incredible work that they have been doing and have done um, just throughout making sure our space is nice and safe. Um, I'm going to, and thank you so much um, uh, to our wonderful Two Cents crew who support the channel on a monthly basis. Thank you all so much. Again, out of the kindness of your heart, you've decided to monthly, um, you know, support the channel. And I appreciate every single one of you and all that you do to support us. And also to our Gold Star supporters. Thank you all so much. Again, um, in the super thanks, super chat, super stickers, donations, PayPal, Cash App, merchandise, all the ways that you have chosen to support the channel. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, again, if you, I'm gonna put our little banner there. Again, if you are new here and have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and do so. And click the notification bell so that you know when we drop a video. And definitely like and share our channel. We are trying to grow this channel. So please help us do that. And if you're able, join our Two Cents crew and um, where you support the channel on a monthly basis and get little perks as well. So, but thank you all so much. Um, I love you and um, I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone. Uh, yeah, I most likely will chat with you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>